Can we talk about Aspen now? Let's do it. Let's go diving into Aspen. So let's talk about this one. Background here is Stephen Sod, right? He founds this thing because he comes out of the pharma sector. He's employed in that basis, sells a business, takes the old SA druggists business with some help from Investec. And Gus Attridge by his side. Exactly, his second uh, in charge. And they basically build what has become one of the fastest growing pharma companies, operating globally now. They've done a number of important acquisitions in recent times. It's a combination of business that manufactures generic drugs, as well as being active in the deep vein thrombosis arena, that's a new area for them, as well as being a pretty big player in the infant baby formula business across the world and in emerging markets in particular. Glaxo, we need to touch on the relationship with Aspen and Paul, you have the lowdown on that. Well, that's about a 6% stake, but let's just put down for the record the marker with regard to the size of this one. This is by far the largest. It's got 161 billion, billion rand from market the market cap. cap perspective, PE down from 40 to, to 31 and yield here of 0.5 percent yeah, there's, no there's that distribution but it's yeah. not really a stock you would own for the dividend no, that's clear. definitely not a stock look very exciting company and GlaxoSmithKline Klein has gone with a lot of their drugs to get the distribution via Aspen into the emerging markets I mean, Aspen which is what one Paul alluded to yeah, earlier Aspen must have one of the biggest distribution networks to get the stuff out there in emerging markets and the big global players they just simply don't have that so so GSK has given, I don't know, over probably the last seven, eight years, a number of, I suppose, rights to the drug or rights to the distribution of their certain drugs to actually move out into the emerging markets. And of course, Aspen does manufacture but Paul, this is where the, the overhang began uh, and the downside that we've Good. seen on yeah, Aspen. So when the that first the deal with Glaxo was done, they got an 18% stake. They first of all sold six, then they sold another six a couple of months ago, and they still have another 6% to go. And that's what the market is still worried about? And they could sell down further? Well, exactly. So there's a bit of an overhang there because the people that were buying those stocks were in fact exactly the same institutions who had previously been accumulating the stock in the open market. But I think what's important to note is that Aspen is now a real player on a global basis. It has access to capital in European and other markets. It's starting to play. It's buying things from Merck. It's buying things from Glaxo for cash, utilizing resources raised in the secondary markets. So a very markets. strong balance sheet. And it has a diverse operational base now. We know its Sigma acquisition in Australia was a very successful one. They basically reorganized the international production side of things. They retained the key brands. They've got a great position there. They've got a great position in Asia, Latin America. Remember, that chart doesn't look so good. I but was this going is a to say, let's just talk company. about the, the, the chart there for a moment because that's not reflecting the excitement in your story right now. Yeah, look, the share price peak, I'm not quite sure what's going on exactly with the graph, but the share price peak was not 400 and yeah. plus. It was about 430 rand a yeah. share. So as far as that goes, you can see there is a big slump since then, and the slump coincides with the announcement of the Glaxo sale, which was done at 372. But I'm sorry to say that it hasn't recovered its power and Persia, it's currently sitting below 350 as it trades Which today. Which then yeah. goes to the question yeah. as to whether this is a good buying yeah, opportunity. Look, Could this peaked, be the entry point? Yeah, the share price peaked 440, it's dropped to about yeah. 340 odd, odd now. But more importantly, with earnings growth and the price fall, the price earnings ratio has come down to 31 or 30. So the real question is, is 30 okay? When you look at the earnings history, the earnings history is fantastic. Their last set of results, I think the earnings were up 21 or 22 odd percent. So it certainly is exciting. It's got lots of other qualities. Extremely good Rand Edge. This is not a South African company anymore. Mm -hmm. Extremely good Rand Edge. They, they are, part, most of their businesses is in fact in the defensive part of, of pharmaceuticals. I would wait a little bit, but maybe I'm just trying to be too clever to wait for the bottom of the share price. You know, taking a longer term view, I actually think you can buy at this level, but you look today, it's down another 3% today. Is Wayne trying to be too clever by waiting for another entry point when we've got a, a 31 PE? Well, the t trouble is it's quite a tricky timing issue because the company will only bring results back to the market after the period of June has transpired. We know that Stephen Saad did four huge deals last year. There's a lot more debt. But there's a lot more contribution to earnings, but we don't know exactly what those are because some of them came in for a month or two, others were three, six months. It's a bit of a jumble. 
So I think what is likely is that we will see some sort of clarity, a trading update, some operational updates, and that will set the scene. But as far as the market is concerned, there's definitely a view out there that the earnings for the next period are going to be a little bit more muted yes. with regard to the growth, and that makes it tricky to time an entry at this level. Uh, it sounds as though you're sitting on the sidelines, I'm, almost I'm, a, a wait I'm, and I'm, see I'm waiting, but, but understand. If you can buy this share at a decent price, you are going to do well over time. Because this is for 10 years yes. and beyond. I would think so. This yes. is the blue chip that you need to have in your portfolio. And this is a stock that has moved significantly yeah, around stock. earnings announcements because they've typically been one of those companies that surprises positively. So whether or not that will be the case or not, you know, I don't like to bet against the market. The market's moves normally tell its own story and often the moves come first and then the news comes later. So I don't want to stand here and say the market's getting it wrong. The earnings are going to be spectacular. It's probable that the earnings are going to see some sort of revision downwards. Otherwise, this move wouldn't be happening. This is one of the big holdings in the hot stocks portfolio, Paul. We've done very well out of the stock yeah, previously. Yeah, it's not enormous, enormous, enormous. I think we've got about a 7 8% exposure in our portfolio to this one. So it's not going to kill us if yeah. it has a bad patch. But it's certainly one that we have a high conviction in. A high conviction we've got to test whether you would buy more of aspen but i suppose that also goes to the fact that we don't have much more money to exactly put into but anything. for me it's definitely hot it's definitely hot hot mm -hmm. or not i'll sit i'll sit in the sidelines for a little bit longer so I'll, you're going I'll, not I'll, hot I'll, I'll, but only on the share price because i think it's going to come down more you've got to say it not hot thank you